Kaya Kora. Hello, friends. It is day 42. The answer to the question. What's the question? Hmm. Either you know or you don't know. <laughs> oh, hang on. There's a message from Bob. All right, here we are. Walking from the beautiful dog pool camp to what we hope is the equally beautiful Mount Chance camp. Look at this road that the Bibbulmun has gifted us. And no obstacle, flat, wide, easy trample. Trample? Tramp. That's a new word. Tramp. Tramp. Trundle. Trimple. Drimble. Anyway, you know, it looks, seems quite plain, but look, getting close. And you start to see flowers. Really quite an abundance of flowers through there. Right, it's early in the day, so the first fly just landed on me. Day continues and the road changes colour. <sighs> okay, so in the Bibbulmun hut shelters, there are two books. There's the green log book, and that's the book in which everyone should put their names. You get put a couple of other details like whether you're part of a group or your age, vaguely where you're from, where you started, where you're finishing and how long you expect to take. Um, and there's room for comments there. That's partly for emergency purposes. If someone goes missing, they can trace where they've been. But it's also used by the Track Foundation for data collection, for funding applications and things. So if you're walking the track, even if you're doing a day hike, it's really good if you put your name. But the other book that's in the campsites is the Red Book, the book of stories and pictures, and poems and jokes and reflections. Always an entertaining read. It's how you'll learn about whether or not there are rats or a resident snake. In a recent Red Book, we learnt of the Zip Challenge. You know, maybe if you're having a bit of a challenging time and you want to distract yourself, the Zip Challenge is to mentally conjure up and add together the number of zips on your person, on the clothing that you're wearing, on and in your bag. It's tougher than you think. These, these zip measurements all have been about half an hour apart. <laughs> I think it's uh, keeping Bob entertained as he's powering on ahead. Um, when Kath read this this challenge in the Red Book, um, there was a guy from uh, um, Holland. Holland, yes. Well, do you have something like 50, 51 zips or something like that? Yeah, uh, we did it yesterday. I got. I guessed 16 and I had 17. Forgot his fly. I forgot my zipper on my pants. My fly. And Kath guessed. So she guessed right, 26. No, no, I said 26 and I found another one this morning. Ah. 27, the laundry bag. <laughs> so, uh, one off. Not bad. It's wide off the road. It's a wide open road Now you can go Any place That you wanna go mm. <laughs> Oh Cheese and pasta wrap for lunch. You've got it, Bob. You're on to it. Hmm. Maybe on a hot day. It's pretty easy walking when it's like this, really. But there's a froggo in there somewhere. Whoa, look at the tadpoles. I don't know if you can see them. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. When you put your two here, 
two in my back pockets and then my fly. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Two here, fly, and there's two on the back. <laughs> I found Bob. <laughs> Caught him up because he's writing all this, <laughs> all these notes. Well, it makes it interesting, doesn't it? It does. It does. So you know what I'm going to have for lunch. You know what I'm going to have for yeah. dinner. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, that lunch sounded quite good, actually. Was... Oh, yeah. I, well, we had one the other day. It was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Cabanara <laughs> pasta with on a wrap. We <laughs> just had 15 minutes. Back then. Lovely red tails. Here they go. Gee. A few funky little carnivorous a plants size, here. You know. Yes. And you would think so out here. These I mean. pink ones. Pink flowers. Clean, yeah. They're well, carnivorous plants underneath them. The flowers will attract. Yeah. He's in. Now we did see a little froggy jumping around here, but I've lost him now. Plenty of life in that sludge. Plenty of life. And a probably big billabong there. Hey. Welcome to the Pinger Up Plains. Got these great little hillocks. You can see the trees growing. There must be something very different going on with the soil and the geology there. But in here, lots of grasses, flowers, plenty of bees, flies. Probably more flies than bees, actually. It feels like it's going to get pretty boggy and stuff again soon. Are you going through? Um, still deciding. We've been told there's a hundred metre stretch that uh, looks like we might have to wade through. There is a track on the side, but it looks pretty wet as well. So you're gonna end up. Oh, well, Kat's maybe finding one on that side. Uh, there's one on that side, but I don't know. I'm, it's time, my time to shine. I'm going in. She's going in. Oh, it looks like you're walking on water. Oh, you're jeebus. Your feet wet yet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't think there's uh, much escaping it. Yeah. Not too bad. Ah, uh, there it goes. Yeah. And then... Oh, very wet. The reflections are great. Looks good for the video. Right, I'll, uh, might have to put the camera away though, so I don't fall over. Actually, uh, quick update. Bob's gone the, uh, I'm gonna take my clothes off and put my other shoes on. Look at that. Ideal slippers. Yeah. Yeah. It got it sus. That's great. <laughs> See you on the other side. Well, that wasn't that wasn't too bad at the end of the day. We stopped off at the end and uh squeezed our socks out and things like that so I, oh, fuck. <laughs> good time to pull out the camera <laughs> as you were saying okay before i put the camera away what i was going to say is we've seen literally thousands of tadpoles and and little frogs probably um i know they're just the baby frogs a couple of centimeters long bouncing all over the place but through this whole area there must be absolutely hundreds of thousands if not millions i don't know anyway um i think we might try and deal with that there is a track through there we'll have a uh we'll have a team meeting <laughs> uh, dude. Go on in there. we'll get back to you 
As a quick update too, we stuck to the left hand bank and um, we just managed to scrape through. Um, Bob's already changed his shoes again and he's just coming straight through the middle. But what I was going to say before was for that school group that would be following on behind us, it's either 15 or something, 17 of them. It's going to be so dug up and so muddy. That's how you do it. <laughs> This is the Mount Chance campsite. And through here and up there, that's Mount Chance. Up we go. Good morning, day 43. It always amazes me coming out of those clearings and the forest section ends and then there's a new either section with just the plains in it or farmland. And just all of a sudden you come out to a road and everything changes. We just spotted, actually over there was a um, seems to have disappeared now. Some sort of bird of prey, not sure what it was. Not sure if they get wedge-tailed eagles down here. Um, oh, there he is. Yeah, no, camera's not going to pick him up. Um, Mount Chance last night. Absolutely brilliant up there. Uh, ended up going up three times. Up to the top of that. Ah. Another one of Bob's uh, messages, water rat zone. I wonder if he, wonder what he saw. Uh, so we're going from Mount Chance to Wool Bales Camp uh, today, 21K or thereabouts. Um, perfect walking conditions. It's uh, low 20s. Um, oh, there he is. I don't know if you can see him in the sky there. He's about there. Yeah, I don't think this camera will pick him up. We we're reading in the red book that we might have some more wading to do this afternoon. And actually a few people complaining about this 
these sections are a bit boring and people complaining about the road sections um, there's only a few k's really and you know it's just a wide track so I don't know we still found them interesting I don't know what people expect constantly over a thousand kilometer trail there he is Yeah, so anyway, uh, just another great day on trail. And uh, we're due to tick over the 700 kilometer mark, around about here somewhere. It's a bit hard because it depends on which, which maps you read and which apps you're looking at. A lot of the water's gone down, wildflowers are out. The nose, which were something, all seated up now. And all the markings we get to see along the track, trying to work out which animal's doing what. Millions of frogs we saw yesterday. And all the stuff we walk past and don't even notice. Uh, quick update. Oh, there's one of these new Put curly things on it. But this is our track. It's turning into this. And we could end up waiting any moment, but we've changed our socks and inner soles and stuff. So if we go in, we go in. Because the waiting is the hardest part. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, looks like we're in. More of a grassy section. In your face. Wow. We got through that uh, last waiting section, not too bad. <laughs> We've got, actually, in those trees up there, I'd say that's higher ground. Uh, hopefully, if we can get to there without too much more uh, trouble, we might be through it. I'll let you know. Yeah, so we have made it back to higher ground, um, but we're just checking the topography of the maps, and it looks like we'll be going over a bit more, uh, a bit more of the flatlands before we get to camp I've only got about 2k to go but there's still a good chance of getting wet remarkably it's still the same day mountain charts to wall bells here we are walking through green tunnels all of a sudden it's just a yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Moments later, tea tree swamp. What's next? Who knows? What's around the next corner? <laughs> Maybe Bob. It's 
bushman. So it'd be a very long game of poo sticks under this bridge. <laughs> like a bridge over very calm water. We've been coats on, coats off, umbrellas out, umbrellas away. Today, little bits of rain coming and going. Too hot for the coats though, that's for sure. So the umbrellas really have proven their worth. Just when it gets very heavy. When it's quite light, it doesn't really matter if you get a little bit wet. It dries off very quickly. Right now, obstacle course time. Right. You've got to get through this stuff without tripping yourself over. But, um, meanwhile, there's a riot of purple everywhere. And don't get too distracted. Either way, the bracken, will get you. the bracken will get you, yeah. I've got some solid bruising on my calf from bracken. A bush bash a couple of days ago. So you could say I'm bracken bruised. Yeah, we almost made it through that last bit. It was literally one puddle. Oh, it's part of a creek system actually um, that we had to get through ended up in the water well it was the first time for me today I didn't want to tell Kath I got through that other system without getting wet <laughs> so she's been walking right in the last 3k with wet shoes and we're heading up um, up into slightly higher ground again, probably got about a kilometre to go till camp. Plenty of diversity. Heaps of different insects. Um, frogs. We saw some, also saw some claws. Some sort of crustacean on the, uh, on the trail. I don't know if there's some sort of inland crab or yabby or something that lives around here. I saw an emu. Yeah, Kath saw an emu. Uh, yeah. All good fun. Yeah, I think I spoke too soon. And uh, our hut's up on, on top of that hill, up in the distance. So, uh, we've had to commit here, still not in the centre of it all, but they're all well and truly wet. Ooh, found another path, eh? That's over, you don't lose your skin in it, you're doing okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's close, we're almost there. Both of your feet wet, Howie? They are now. Mm -hmm.